have you ever heard of the term mother sauce? Now, if you're not super well versed in the kitchen, it may not be something you're familiar with, but it can change your world when you master at least one of them. We're being joined by culinary arts instructor at CTE Academy, Janelle Wempner. She's here today to give us a crash course in mother sauces and help us build a better bechamel just in time for all our holiday dinners. Yes. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to start with the bechamel yes. and get it cooking. Yes, okay. and I think, I think your viewers are going to go, oh, I make that all the time. I didn't know that was a bechamel. I think that's what it they're going to say. It sounds intimidating, yes. but yes. it's not. It's okay. not. There's Perfect. something they've made all the time. So I'm going to tell you how to get that going and kind of let you babysit that, and then we'll go through and talk some other things. All right. So we're going to start with the basic roux. So a roux starts with equal parts fat and flour. So I have three tablespoons of butter that we're going to put into the pan and when that gets nice and hot and melted just starting to bubble we're going to add in our flour and we're going to cook that raw flour out. It takes about a minute to get that cooked. Okay. It'll make like a paste so you can start with that. All right. And then once they... Um, we want to keep this a very white roux. So there are different kinds of roux. You can go with a white, a blonde, and a dark roux. Depending on what you're making, what, how your flavor profile is going to be, obviously the more you darken your roux, the more layers of flavor you're going to develop. Okay. But the darker the roux, the also you are going to um, not be able to have as many thickening properties. Okay. So if you want a thicker sauce, you're going to want a much lighter roux, okay? Okay. Or the potential for a thick sauce. So then after you get the, your flour worked in there for about a minute, you're going to slowly add in your milk in little increments, about a third of, of the milk at a time. We have a cup there. And then... Um, is that getting a little hot? Looks yeah, it's little... getting good. It's okay. not, I don't think it's, 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 okay. not, it's just right, I think. And then it, it's, it's just a matter of getting it how thick you want, depending on what you're going to do with it. Okay, so we'll kind of pause there while you get that going, okay. and I'll go through and kind of talk about and mother sauces. And I'm going sauces. for a white, thick... Yes, we want white. white. Okay, we perfect. Want Snow white, like Snow. it is out today. All right, I'm, I'm being put to the test. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so while you got that going, mother sauces. Why do they call them mother sauces? Because from these five sauces, all other sauces are born. So these are the building blocks. That makes sense. Yes. I got it. These are the building blocks of sauces. If you can learn these, you can go anywhere. Okay, okay got and it. And we're going to talk a lot about all the different things you can do with bechamel, and people are going to go, oh, I do that. Oh, I do that. Oh, I do that. I didn't realize, they probably just didn't realize it was a mother sauce okay okay so <clears throat> the first one a tomato sauce yeah one of my favorites yeah just a basic red from tomato sauces to are born things like creole cooking any uh, lots of spanish cooking things like a bolognese for um italian cooking anything you can think with tomato the, the tomato sauce is one of the mother sauces probably something we're all very familiar with one of the things i brought here in this little dish is a little ball of tomato paste and it's frozen so Whenever I open a, a can of tomato paste, it seems like most recipes I have, you know, I, sometimes you can buy it in the tube as well, but if you buy the little cans of tomato paste, maybe your recipe calls for a tablespoon or, yeah. or something, and then you're like, what am I supposed to do with the, the other four ounces of tomato paste? I put it in little one to two tablespoon increments on a piece of parchment, yeah. on a cookie sheet, pop it in the freezer till it's frozen, and then I just peel them off and put them in a Ziploc baggie. Then when I need a tablespoon, I just pull it out. Genius. It's ready to go. Genius. Yes, yes it's a great idea. That's so, it's better than what I do. I just throw the rest of the can away. Yeah, you put yeah. it in your fridge to right, the back, exactly. and then a month later, you're like, what's this doing in here? You toss it. So don't waste it. Don't that's waste a, it. That's okay. a great tip for that. Okay, and then, so that's tomato is one of our first sauces. Our next sauce is espanol. Okay. So it is brown. Um, it's a brown roux, brown stocks. So like a beef stock and then a brown roux. So what you're doing there, we're just going to take it a little further. So this is really thick because it's, um, I've, I cooked it earlier this morning, but it's, I just continued to cook down what you did. So okay. I took my fat and my flour and I slowly darkened it. And you could even go darker than this, but you can kind of see, I've got some bechamel here, so you can kind of see the difference in color between a dark roux and yeah. a light roux. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> that would be, if you were making, um, maybe you wanted a darker pan sauce, maybe you're going to put some mushrooms in a little red wine or white wine and have a little demi-glaze to go over um, a filet or maybe you're making some uh, pot roast, you know, right. something like that would be when you would go with the, the darker roux. It's getting roux. a little lumpy. Okay, well, keep stirring. Okay, keep stirring. thanks. <laughs> So we had tomato, espanol, hollandaise. Okay. We've made hollandaise We've done on hollandaise. here. Yep. So it's an emulsification of your egg yolks and your butter, and then you use a little lemon juice to brighten that. And the lemon.
lemon juice and the and it does the denaturization so that the egg is basically cooked, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Very good. I'm learning something. Yes, I okay. love it. And then we have velouté, which would be a light stock and a light roux. Okay. okay, so instead of this dark stock, dark roux, so maybe, maybe you do a, a shallow poach on some uh, white fish and then you remove it and with the pan sauces, you um, put in a little white wine, you put in a little lemon, that kind of stuff and then, oh yes, excellent, excellent, I think I'm doing excellent. well. You are, okay. you're doing great. So let's kind of pause there. You can start to season. So a little nutmeg is a great addition. I think a bechamel has to have a yes, nutmeg, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it really yeah, does. It's okay. an amazing component to it. So we can put a little of that in there. And then we're just going to put a little salt in it. You're going to give a little taste. And I brought some tasting spoons here so okay. you can see how you do it for just a classic um, bechamel. So back to the velouté, light stock. So um, I think of it too as if you're, uh, when you're making a chicken pot pie, Yeah. that base for that, you have that light chicken uh, stock, and then you ha are working in some of a roux to get it thickened, okay? Okay, chef, are you going to, okay. are you going to see if it yeah. is good? Yeah, we got Like, test, test me? <laughs> I think it needs a little more salt. More salt? Okay. But you try it. You try it and see what you think. Okay. I love that. And we're almost out of time. So what would you use this sauce for? Oh, uh, scalloped potatoes, macaroni and cheese. If we add cheese to it, young cheeses, so they melt nice, like a provolone or a asiago, a young fontine, that will become a Mornay sauce. It can be the base for your uh, mac and cheese. Um, anytime you need cream of mushroom, cream of celery, this is it. This Don't is buy it. it in the can. Don't do that. Can. Roast a little of celery off to the side and add it into that, or a little mushrooms and put it into that. You don't need to buy the cans of that. You now well, know perfect. how to make it. I think that I passed the test, and now I know more about the mother sauces, yes. so we're, we're ready. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We'll be right back after this. Stay with us.